what's going on Warriors? It's Drew Joe and with Professor Eric today. Yeah, it's Monday, so we're gonna throw up a colleague video or a striking video today. Not bad. Striking on Monday, JKD, Muay Thai, Western Boxing, Savat, whatever we come up with, MMA. Wednesday, Gracie Jiu Jitsu. Yep. And then Friday, we're gonna do Kali was a weaponry tactic. So it might be empty hand Kali, but today I wanna to bring up some Wing Chun. Cool. Uh, you hear a lot of people say like Wing Chun isn't functional, it's for health and vitality, it can't be used in MMA. There's a really good fighter using it right now. I can't remember his name. He's about my height, like a light middleweight, 160 pounds. Hmm. Uh, but he's been winning really successfully and he's practiced Wing Chun all the time. So the thing with Wing Chun and trapping is that it's not a complete system in my mind, meaning it doesn't have a broad depth of answers. Yeah. It's like wrestling. Yep. Wrestling is not a complete system. It functions high level at one specific range. Yeah, right? absolutely. And when, and when two people are cooperating and being in that specific range, you take yeah. three feet out of that range and it doesn't it's work right. anymore. Exactly. So that needs to be our approach, in my opinion, to Wing Chun, is there's a time and place to use it where it works beautifully. But just like wrestling, man, if, if you're in three feet of water or you're on an airplane, Wrestling is probably not going to be your go-to no. art, right? How are you going to get to the ground on an airplane? Are you going to do it in the aisle or over the seat? You're going to do a double leg? Yeah, well, I, I saw a guy try, which was pretty <laughs> awesome. They both fell over the seat and looked really, really uncomfortable. So the range Wing Chun happens in, they say it's from the bone and the wrist back. So if he grabs my neck, if we're here where strikes can still be thrown, but look, I'm just out of elbow range. This is the range for Wing Chun. So what happens is, you see people play this game yeah, called Chi Sack. Yeah, so Eric's got about two days of Wing Chun in, but his grappling is good, so he can function here. Because if you really look at the idea, it's just wrist pummeling. Yeah. And then it's two people trying to hit with wrist pummeling going on. Okay, so what you need to do to start making gains in Wing Chun is to hone in what range it needs to be done in and what does that structure look like. So in general, we want to fill the center line. We want to occupy the center line with our limbs and with our body. And we want to have a lot of pressure. And that pressure comes from the back foot. So we're just going to demonstrate really simply just the pox out and hit. Pox out is the forward hand slap. So really basic exercise. We're just going to start, we're both using our fingers and we're aiming at the center line. So if I drop my hand, you tag me in the chest. That's exactly where it needs to go. It's like a, the bullseye is right here at the center. So if I'm holding his weight up, let's, let's turn the corner here, and he drops his hand, and I go, Ugh, center, yeah. that means I'm not really aiming a true center. Same thing is true if I'm he's holding me up, but I'm pushing to the yeah. side, he just needs to let me go. So the whole point of the reference is to cultivate straight line energy to the spine. Okay, so I'm just going to start there. Now my hand is going to go to the form where I want to collapse it, and it's going to be almost like a straight post. And then I'm going to push off my back foot. So to exaggerate, this is going to touch. I'm going to push off my back foot. That's why I'm floating my front foot. I'm going to push shuffle in and then hit. So now you can see I'm back to that range where I can clinch. I can't quite elbow the chin. And my hips and shoulders are square to create driving energy. And that's it. So we're just here. I'm just going to touch and go. That's it. And then you go ahead. Yeah, pretty good. Not bad. That's it. One, two. So you can see I'm getting a little reaction. Your front foot's kind of lightening up, huh? Like when I make contact. Yo, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's moving me for sure. He's yeah. Moving for and that's all comes from the back leg drive. Now, push shuffle is to add power to something. Push shuffle jab, same idea. When you step and slide, step shuffle, these are to adjust distance. Yep. The push shuffle is to add power. So you watch Pacquiao? Woo, or Tyson, they would like yeah. jump into the hook. That's a push shuffle. So the same thing is happening in Wing Chun. Okay, we start here on the outside, Kung Fu Masters. Yeah. Why do we do that? Reference point. Reference point? Yeah. Back in the 60s, when Wing Chun really entered the country and was popularized by Bruce Lee, what did you encounter? Karate. Yep. So you feed a jab, the reference point. Uh, you yeah. jab low, Reference point, because that was the common technology at the time. But what do we encounter? If somebody's a striker today, what skills do they usually have? 
boxing, boxing kickboxing, so boxing, Muay Thai, boxing. MMA. It's all relatively the same structure. And they don't usually block with their lead arm. Right. Because we know in boxing, if I feed Eric a jab, if he covers with the rear hand, he can counter with his own jab and he's not exposed to my right. If he covers with the lead hand, the right can come yeah. in high or low. And if, if you just do a catch with the lead hand, I know you never would. Yeah. How's he gonna jab now? His hand is occupied. And I'm safe from your right hand because yeah. I'm too far away. So this idea, it's not antiquated, but you need to know the reason why you would be doing it. So how do we get Wing Chun back into functionality? He feeds a jab, yep. I cover the limb, and I cover the rear hand. So now from here, I'm at my reference point, I'm just on the inside. So now I'm gonna trap and circle the arm this way. So it's much more common that this entry from a split entry is where you're gonna find that trapping works better from because you're gonna find it in every modern context. Anytime you spar, you have the ability to get to a split mm -hmm. entry on somebody, split entry rear, split entry lead. It's an easy counter. Most people in boxing have it, right? So how we can train it is the same thing. We just start on the inside, same deal, aim it at the center. And now I push the arm the same way, but I'm gonna circle as I come in. That's it, so again, so it's the same thing. Connect first, then the foot moves, then the hand. Yeah, you so, yep, and you, yeah, exactly, that's it, that's it, that's it. So what I wanna to try to eliminate is additional movement. So people will like wave their hand no, and then they'll go, space. or they'll take this out and then they'll go. I just wanna just drive forward with no additional movement and keep my stance solid this way. Okay, so you can start on the outside, it's a little easier to learn, and then you can start from the inside, make this circle, and come in this way, because that's that reference point there indicates a split entry. You can still get people on the outside, like if you feed me like a wild backhand, sometimes people will shell up like a double pillar cover, mm -hmm. and you can get it off that as well. But I find, man, split entry. Plus it's the range. Like if you jam my rear hand and you split entry, you, yeah. See, he's, he's pretty much in trapping range just by covering that yep. way. And it's way easier to pull this stuff off. What I see a lot of people do, because Wing Chun traditionally will sit on their back foot. Oh, and then they encounter a boxer just like, and yeah. you try to throw a jab and they try to yeah, come. Just so far out of range. Yeah, so to be successful. exactly. It's like going back to my wrestling idea, right? Yep. If you're a striker and I'm like, I'm going to shoot from here. I'm going to shoot. How am I ever going to get in on it? Right, but if I can throw at least a punch and you start to tie up, yeah. like say you're the yeah. Now I'm in his world. If he's the wrestler, you can take advantage of him. Mm -hmm. But you can't go through all those ranges with nothing in between. All right, let's talk about the back end. Okay, so again, that range is very specific. I can't elbow. I can grab the head, but I'm not in elbowing range yet. So that's another not deficiency but it's just defining where Wing Chun lives. It, in that transition point, that's where it dominates. Mm -hmm. And have there been wrestlers that dominated MMA? Oh yeah. Yeah, for sure. There's strikers that dominate MMA. There's jujitsu players. Any range can be owned, but it's also susceptible to counterattacks and other things coming in. So when this starts working, don't be surprised if you have somebody who's good at grappling, now he's gonna enter and tie up. And that will kill your Wing Chun game also. I have to either be able to maintain that space specifically or be willing to do one or the other myself, right? Like if I'm here, you enter the grapple. Now, nah, man, I, I've taken some boxing, yeah. right? I have to switch gears. I'm either gonna become a boxer or I'm gonna go into grappling myself. Cause you can't say this one tool is gonna win every situation. It doesn't for anything. Nothing works out. Nothing works out. Yeah, I would like to hit my arm bar every single time, yeah. every single day, but it just yeah. doesn't happen. Well, then, like, when he was just saying where uh, wrestling and things like that have become very dominant in MMA, but at the same time, you think of it, it's not a fight. If someone's not yeah. not participating and allowing you to be in that certain right. range, it's, it's completely situation. ineffective. Yeah. Completely ineffective. Yeah, they're just running from you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man, it's just uh, there's a time and place for pretty much anything. Mm -hmm. And I think Wing Chun is really functional. It's not just for health and vitality. That's a great component of just training in general. Yeah. But I've met some deadly cats where I, I they've owned it. Yeah, one, man, one of my mentors, <laughs> and uh, 
he's far better than I am. But uh, Chris Clark, he idea. would he would own that space so much. I would try to shoot on him, and he it. would just nail me. And then I would try to back up, and he, he would nail me. Nailing. He would just keep that tether so well. So it can be produced that way. But look at like look at Ronda Rousey versus Holly Holm. Yeah. And no offense, I, I like both of them as competitors. But uh, Ronda was like, oh, I don't have to work on striking because yeah. I'm going to take her down. And it did not work. She looked like a Pez dispenser. Yeah. So you can't be so in love with your art, like jujitsu or boxing, that you don't, you put blinders on to all the other answers. You have to have an open mind. So the open mind is like, it can work in this context very well. It can also be beaten by these other things, and I got to have an antidote yeah. for that. So, well, where does it function really well at? It would work great on an airplane. You've got solid Wing Chun skills. Mm -hmm. Really good in a bathroom, in the bathroom stall or something, somebody comes in. So there's definitely areas where Wing Chun excels. And that's also unfortunate that people don't see that. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, we see wrestling works, but we don't ever think of it in this light, you know? Trying new things just makes you better. That's, that's right. And you, cause you see the commonalities and you think of what you know in different ways as well. Yeah. Oh, hey. Uh, can you meet me over at the heavy bag real quick? And yeah, uh, in case you guys don't have partners because we're still under this pandemic, uh, we'll take just a short clip out of this and I'll have Eric meet me over the heavy bag so you can see me do it on that. Cool. All right, so we're back on the heavy bag real quick. I just want to drop a little material on this because I realize some of you might not have partners. You can still get the same fundamental out of this. I have a Mok Jong, that's the Wing Chun dummy here in the back room as well. That's even easier, but you can't impact it as much with the hit. So most people probably have this. You probably don't have a Mark Jones at home, maybe you do. So I'm gonna start on the same reference point. So I'm trying to touch it with the bone and the wrist against the bag. And I'm gonna keep the primary thing the same, except for now I'm gonna do this box out as more of a hit. And sometimes I put a glove on, I even do a closed knuckle like I'm, I'm punching the arm. So all I'm gonna do is just shuffle and backhand. I might even do it without touching, just so I can really work the backhand. But I have to still push off the back foot. So again, my arm is going to move first, then the energy from the back foot, and finally the hand. I mention that because people kind of retract their arm, then they catch up, or you move your foot first. Now it's just my arm, so my arm is not enough to move the bag. But if my arm goes and then my feet are behind it, I can really generate a lot of pressure because I'm leveraging the ground up this way. So really simply, this is going to go first, then the foot That's it. That's your basic pox out watch away on the heavy bag. All right, you guys, thanks for watching. Professor Eric and I will be back on Wednesday and then Kali on Friday. Really appreciate you guys for liking and subscribing to the channel. Uh, it's been great to kind of meet and interact with everybody and keep all the questions coming. We love it. Absolutely. All right, guys, Warriors out. Warriors out.